So today's video is all about the best shoe rotation at the minute or sort of the best shoes for every single category in 2022. Obviously, I haven't tried every single shoe on the market and there is some shoes in this list that I haven't actually tried myself, but I just know from data and other reviews that they're worth to be on this list. I do have about 25 pairs of shoes down here. So just for example, some Brooks ones, some A6 ones, New Balance, Nike, and Adidas. I'm gonna go through them. Starting at easy slash recovery shoes, daily trainers, tempo slash threshold, faster stuff when you're not in spikes, racing for five and 10K, racing for half marathon and marathon, training in spikes and racing in spikes. Comment if you think I've missed any shoes or any other shoes that you personally think would fit into that category of the best shoes of 2022 and also let us know what shoes you're excited to come out in the future and for the rest of this year. So now that's out of the way, the first category is easy run slash recovery shoes. And for me, there is only one shoe what takes the victory and that is the Nike Invincible. This is my third pair of Nike Invincibles. It's my favorite mileage shoe ever and I tend to wear them as a mixture of easy runs and daily running. Recovery runs 100% always this shoe and then daily runs sometimes in this shoe. The stack is massive, Zoom X foam all the way through. It is phenomenal for this kind of use. You do runs and you feel better than when you started and that's exactly what you want in a recovery run shoe. The whole point is to recover, get the blood flow pumping and reduce impact. Injury prevention as well. I'm always a bit scared to say this will stop you from getting injuries as much. For me personally, I definitely think it helps with reducing impact and therefore stopping injuries. Other shoes in this category that I'd suggest using are the New Balance More V3. And as well as that, I would suggest a shoe that I actually haven't tried, sadly, which I'm hoping to get next is the A6 Gel Nimbus 24. The new foam, the FF Blast Plus, is apparently amazing. And I have shoes with FF Blast and the FF Blast Plus foam is just an upgrade of that. So I couldn't recommend that shoe enough, even though I technically haven't tried it. On to the daily trainer. For me, it's sort of that standard pace where you can go from easy run pace to steady pace. And if you want to throw in a tempo, you can do maybe some hill reps, maybe some strides, can do a bit of everything. And I know a lot of people watching this probably see that as the Nike Pegasus as the main contender, just because it's the most one of the most popular shoes on the planet. I'm not a fan of that, but I have included that in my other shoe option because I acknowledge that people do like it for whatever reason. My personal favorite daily trainer is the Nova Blast 2, the A6 Nova Blast 2, that is a bit of a change from the Nova Blast 1. It is a bit heavier, and a bit bouncier and not as quite as fast, which in some sense I was using the Nova Blast 1 for that reason, but this still does an amazing job at all of that. The foam is phenomenal. It still reduces a lot of impact and it's very bouncy. The shoes ride is just really, really good. The Nova Blast is for me, in my opinion, by far the best daily trainer on the market at the minute. And the Nova Blast 3 coming out soon has FF Blast Plus in, which we mentioned in the Gel Nimbus, which is already out. So I think when that shoe comes to the market, it's going to be game over because it's going to be even better. And I've heard that the A6 Nova Blast 3 is going to be the best shoe A6 have ever made. Following up for the rest of the daily trainers, I do have the Brooks Ghost 14 as one of those. It's just a brilliantly average, does exactly what it says on the tin kind of shoe. I really like the shoe actually, it's very, very good. And if I could recommend any shoe, I would recommend this over the Nova Blast 2 purely because I think this is just better suited to everyone's running style. And it's probably the most consistent shoe for everyone out there. It is a neutral shoe, but it's also quite stable, quite light to say how much support it has and how heavy it looks. Other options for the daily trainer are New Balance 1080 V12, I think we're on now, or the 12 might be coming out very soon. Again, with a new foam, Fresh Foam X rather than just Fresh Foam. So the V11 is probably the one out of the minute. It's just a really good New Balance shoe. And the other shoe I've used in the daily section is the Nike Pegasus 38. I don't like the shoe. People like running in it. People can do sessions in it. I can't, I can't deny it's one of the most popular shoes on the planet. Personally, I don't like it. It gives me problems in my Achilles and my arch, but it is a responsive shoe. And I haven't got it with me because I don't want to buy it or get it sent to me because I'll never use it. So tempo and threshold shoe. This is the category what's the most subjective in my opinion, because I know a lot of people will do tempos in the Pegasus and the Nova Blast. Personally, for me, I don't. And what I'm kind of looking for in a tempo shoe is one that can sort of feel a bit more comfortable at the faster paces, is a bit more lightweight. And for me, the best shoe is still the Sikoni Dolphin Speed 2, I guess. This is the one. I haven't got the two because the, the, I've got two pairs of the ones and they've 
it's still serving me great, so I don't really need to get the second edition yet. Very, very similar anyway. So I have to get mud on this table, probably not a great idea. It's a really natural ride, feels really comfortable going forward at any pace, to be honest, but tempo and threshold pace is where it feels the strongest. The Power Run PB foam is Ciconia's foam in the endorphin range. I really enjoy this foam. It's quite dense and poppy. Exactly what you'd want in a tempo shoe. Pushes you forward great. I haven't heard anyone complain about the shoe. The other options are the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. Worse version of the RC, which is racing competition. And But the foam is phenomenal and it's got plate in. It's just a bit heavier and a bit less efficient. But it is a really good shoe and it's very soft. And that's why I like training in this shoe, the RC Elite 2. But the TC is just a training version of that. Two of the shoes that fit into this category is the Nike Tempo Next Percent and the New Balance Rebel V2. This shoe, mixed opinions. People don't like the bubble as much. I really enjoy this bubble and I think the shoe is great. It's a mixture of React and ZoomX foam. Makes it not too good but it's also good enough the way you can get down in the training paces. This shoe, it doesn't have a pop. Like, it's, it's probably one of the least poppy shoes I've ever felt in my entire life. Like, everything just gets absorbed. It is extremely soft, though, and again, it just it just feels natural. I feel like when you train in this, you're going to get better because you reduce an impact, but you aren't getting any help at all. So it's a, it's a very honest shoe to wear. It reduces impact, which is a big thing for me. And it's lightweight enough that it's not going to make you feel heavier like others, some other shoes do. It is a phenomenal shoe in terms of softness and comfort and impact reduction. But you don't expect to get something that's going to push you forward like, a, like you get in these super shoes because that's not what it's going to do. The other option, which I don't have it on me sadly, is the Brooks Tempo. Very, very solid shoe. Again, Brooks, consistently average, does exactly what you want. It's kind of like a workhorse and a good shoe all around. On to the next category, which is non-spikes training. So that's any pace is sort of quicker than 10K or threshold pace down to basically as fast as you want to go without wearing spikes. This is where, honestly, where I normally wear super shoes for every single session. So you'll just see whatever super shoes I include in the 5K and 10K and also the marathon part of it is what I would personally wear. But I've done a list of shoes that I think are the best out of the ones that aren't super shoes. The first one is the Nike Streak Fly. And I know what you're saying. This is a super shoe. I don't think it is quite the super shoe category for me. And I'm saying that because I think this will, even though it does have 5k and 10k written on it, this is a very, very, very good training shoe. And I actually think this is the best training shoe on the market at the minute. No carbon plate. So you're not going to get any stiffness related injuries from that, which some people suffer with. Extremely comfy, which is what you want in a training shoe, like extremely comfy. And it can go exceptionally fast. In fact, the faster you go, the better it feels. It just doesn't have the fatigue aspect of when you're tired. It doesn't carry you as much as I'd like it to. And that's why I'd say it's a training shoe rather than a racing shoe. This is the best training shoe on the market for me at the minute. And it's quite cheap for a Nike shoe, £130, which is... 160 170 dollars something like that again the second endorphin speed can get down to those paces as well so i've included it again i'm not going to talk over it again it's i'm just including it again because it is a very very versatile and good shoe and now i just said i included the second endorphin speed i'm also going to include the nike temper next percent again it can get down fast it is a bit heavy on the heel and sometimes feels a bit solid, but it does get down to those paces. And sometimes when you are running those paces, this is actually one of my favorite shoes to do it in. I feel like you have to have your day with this shoe. I don't know why. Some days it feels great. Some days it doesn't. But it is good for getting down to those faster paces. It's just probably lackluster. If you do hill reps in it, don't because <laughs> it's, it's awful for hill reps. But everything else at faster pace, it's still a really good shoe. The other shoe is the Adios 6. I do have it somewhere in my house. We've just moved. and I'm trying to think where it is but it's not on me. It's just a solid shoe. It's got a bit of Light Strike Pro in the front, which is a super firm from Adidas, but also it's got just Light Strike all the way through. Just feels like a traditional flat, but it is probably the best traditional flat what's not a super shoe, what doesn't have full super firm because that's now the Streak Fly. But yeah, it's, it's, it's still got a very good place and it's very cheap. You can get it for like 70, 80 pounds or like a hundred dollars. So it is a very good budget shoe. So 5K and 10K racing. And I hate to break it to Nike fans or Adidas fans. The best shoe for 5K and 10K racing is the Essex Metaspeed Sky. I don't have it on me. I've only tested this shoe. I don't actually have it for racing because it's so limited. You can never get it anywhere. You just have to look at footpod data of anyone. And it's the best shoe on the market. If it was the Nike Next Percent in terms of brand awareness, 
they'd be, they'd be just even more hype around that shoe. But because it's Asics, there's not as much hype and not as many people wear it. It's just better than the next percent, like marginally better, I'd say, than the next percent in every way, other than the Metaspeed Sky. And I don't mean to boast, I have got four pairs of these now. I feel like I always just go to the shoe to get because it's, again, I train in super shoes and it's just, you know, the next percent is a really, really fast and great shoe. I don't really need to speak on the next percent. Everyone knows how good it is and what it can do. It's just fast, tiny bit stiff and uncomfortable at times, but it's definitely on my list for five and 10K races. The other shoe for five and 10K races is the Takumi Sen 8, which is lighter than the Vaporfly Next Percent. I don't know, I really love this shoe. It feels really good running fast. And the only reason I haven't raced in this yet is because I'm a bit concerned over the 10K, how it'll cope when you fatigue a bit more because the Next Percent is so good for heel striking and when you're tired, it carries you forward. Whereas this shoe doesn't carry you as forward as much as the Next Percent does and the Asics Meta Speed, but this is definitely faster than the, the two previous shoes mentioned. It's just if you can run efficiently for a full race distance without fatiguing, probably my go-to training shoe at the minute, and everything faster than fresh or pace. I'll be wearing the Takumi Sen 8. Phenomenal shoe. Any Adidas fans out there for the 5 and 10 won't be disappointed with this. It makes my list for one of the top 5 and 10K racing shoes. Half marathon and marathon racing shoes. I'm going to go towards the marathon a bit more because the half marathon, you can sort of mix between 10K and marathon shoes. The best based off efficiency and actual science is the Nike Alpha Fly, which I also don't have on me at the minute. But any data from footpod to uh, efficiency testing, it does produce the best results. And now, secondly, I think the next three, what I'm going to say, are all kind of the same. And that is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky again, the Nike Next Percent again, and the Adidas Adios Pro 2. They're sort of the top four shoes for marathon racing, but you've got the Puma range. I've not included any of the Puma shoes because I haven't got any. There's too many Puma shoe names. I don't know which shoes for what, and it's, maybe if there's a Puma rep, you can let me know. This is probably gonna cause the most discussion in the comments. Spike's training shoe, without a doubt, the Adidas Avanti. It is supposedly not that much bigger stack than the Dragonfly. In fact, I think on World Athletics, this will still be legal when the changes happen in 2024, where it has to be under 20 millimeters. So I don't really know how they feel so different. The foam, the Light Strike Pro foam just feels nicer in the Spike than the Dragonfly. And also the Dragonfly has no plate. This has some plastic rods or fiberglass rods, which just gives it a bit more pop. This is faster than the Dragonfly, but also it has more foam underneath, which helps recovery. And so I'd rather train in this shoe than the Dragonfly. So racing in a Spike, I'd put these as exactly the same. I don't have enough reason to pick this over the Dragonfly in 1500 to 5K, but I don't have enough reason to say the Dragonfly is better as well. In the 10K, I would probably wear this over the Dragonfly, again, just because it's got more, and I feel like the Dragonfly, I mean, you can tell, like there's quite a lot less than the Dragonfly, and it's a lot harder than the Adidas Savanti. I really like the spike. Adidas, I've spoke to some Adidas athletes privately and they always say, oh, it's not as good as the Dragonfly. I think that's just because they don't want to make it seem like the spike is doing the running. But I don't think that happens anyway. I think spikes are still generally not improving performance, at least in racing, in training. They help a lot with recovery. But I think this is better than the Dragonfly, especially for the 5 and 10K. The 1500, I'm not too sure yet. I haven't raced in this or trained in it enough to be able to tell exactly. But this does feel faster as well. So... I'm going to put them joint in terms of the best spikes, but I'm edging towards this one and hopefully as I wear it more, I can give a better answer on that. No, I haven't included the New Balance LDX or MDX because they're so limited, I haven't been able to try them. Or the A6 Metaspeed LD or A6 Metaspeed Spike. I don't really know what that's called um, and I haven't worn it. Apparently that is maybe the best shoe though, but I don't have it and I haven't seen many reviews on it to be able to tell you if that's true or not. That is my shoe lineup for 2022. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and have a nice day.